Hi everyone! In this video we're going to start learning about function. Specifically, we're going to talk about the definition of a function, we're going to see different ways to represent functions, and we're going to learn how to recognize a function. Here is the formal definition of a function. Function is the relation in x and y such that for every x there is only one y. To better understand this definition, let's think of a function as the box such that when certain values of x go in the box, function relates them with corresponding values of y. And again, for every value of x, there is only one corresponding y value. So values that go in the box are called inputs of the function. And the values of y that come out of this box are called the outputs of a function. There are two more important definitions that are associated with the function. The first one is the domain of a function, and simply, domain represents all possible inputs of a function, all possible values of x that we can put into the function. And another one is the range of a function, and it represents all possible outputs of a function. Next, let's talk about different ways to represent a function. And no matter what way we use, the goal is always to show how inputs of a function are related to the corresponding outputs. For example, we can use a table to show this kind of relation. In one column, we will list all possible inputs of a function, the x values, and another column will show the corresponding outputs of the function. For example, for input 2, the corresponding output is going to be 5. For input 0, the corresponding output is negative 1, and so on. Function can also be represented using ordered pairs, where each pair of numbers will represent input and corresponding output of function, and we always preserve this order, x value in the first place and y value in the second place. So that's how the given function is going to look like if we use ordered pairs. Input 2 and output 5 is written as an order pair 2, 5, next one as 0, negative 1, and so on. We can also use graphs to represent functions. We simply treat these ordered pairs as coordinates of points. So that's going to be the point that corresponds to the relation 2, 5. It has the x coordinate 2 and the y coordinate 5. And here are the rest of the relations. So that's how the graph of this particular function that has only four relations is going to look like. And another way to visualize a function is to use what we call an arrow diagram or a map. An arrow diagram will list all possible inputs. Remember, they call the domain of the function. And all possible outputs. In other words, the range of a function. And then to use arrows to show the relations. For example, here we can see that input negative 3 has the corresponding output 7. Or we can say negative 3 maps to 7. There is one more way to represent a function, but before we talk about it, let's practice recognizing a function. So we're going to play this quick game where we have to determine if what we look at is a function or not. Let me remind you the definition of a function. Function is a relation in x and y such that for every x, there is only one corresponding y value. Here's our first example. Does this table represent a function? By the way, you might want to stop the video and think of an answer, and then check if you are right or not. Well, this table does not represent a function. And here's the reason. Notice that input 2 has the corresponding output negative 3, and also input 2 has the corresponding output 4, so in other words, one input has two different corresponding outputs, and that's why the relation shown on this table does not represent a function. Here's one more example. Is this a function? Yes, it is. Here we can see that each input has a unique output. And you might be questioning why we have two arrows going to 6. Well, that's because input 5 has the corresponding output 6, and input 7 has the corresponding output 6. However, this still satisfies the definition of a function because each x has only one corresponding y. Here's our next example. Is this a function? The answer is no. 
Notice that we have two ordered pairs with input 3 and two different outputs, 4 and 6. That violates the function definition. One x value corresponds to two different y values. We're going to look at a few more examples. Is this a function? Yes, it is. All inputs have only one corresponding output. How about this one? This time it's not a function. Notice that input 2 has two corresponding outputs, 3 and 4. And here's our last example. Is this a graph of a function? And the answer is no, because of those two points. Each point represents input and output. The x value is the input, so it's 3, and the y value is the output, so input 3, output 5, and then one more point where input is also 3, but then output is 7 this time. And because we have same input but two different outputs, this is not a function. And now as we think about it, we can see that every time when we have two or more points of a graph lined up vertically, this means that they have exactly the same x-coordinate, but then different y-coordinates. In other words, if we're able to draw a vertical line and that line crosses graph at two or more points, this is not going to be a graph of a function. And that creates what we call the vertical line test. To test if the given graph represents a function or not, what we need to do is to simply draw or imagine drawing a lot of vertical lines. And if any vertical line crosses the graph more than once, then the graph does not represent a function. Finally, let's talk about another very popular way to represent a function, and that's an equation. Here's an example. y equals 3x minus 1 is an equation, and it defines a function. It basically tells us what output is going to be produced by a given input. For example, let's use input x equals 2. To determine the corresponding output, we simply plug 2 into the equation for x, simplify and then obtain the output. So 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So for input x equals 2, the corresponding output is y equals 5. Let's record this relation in a table and find a few more. If input is 0, x equals 0, again we plug it in, 3 times 0 is 0, minus 1 is negative 1. And I found a few more. So when input is negative 2, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, minus 1 is negative 7. And then when x equals 3, 3 times 3 is 9, 9 minus 1 is 8. Okay, looks good. So that's basically how equation representing a function works. And of course, we can find more relations here. Think about it. Is there a number that we are not able to plug in for x and then multiply by 3 and subtract 1? Not really. Any real number that we choose can always be multiplied by 3, and then we can subtract 1 from it and obtain an output. So that means that the domain of this function contains all real numbers. And same goes with the range here. Any real number can be an output for this function. Let me show you a few more notations how to say all real numbers. You might see that notation in different resources. This kind of interval can also be used to represent all real numbers, interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. And we also have a special symbol in math representing all real numbers. It's uppercase R with double lines. And this is how it's often handwritten. Double vertical line and then you make an R. Well, let's go back to those four relations that we obtained for the given function, and let's graph these relations. Here are the four points representing these relations. For example, this point has coordinates 3, 8, so that means that it corresponds to this relation here. First of all, notice that these four points are lined up. And this is not a coincidence. Also think about how we said that these are not the only four relations that this function has. In fact, we just said that domain and range include all real numbers, so it means that we can pick any real number for x and find corresponding y values. So we can place many more points on this graph. Where do you think they're going to end up? 
well, they all gonna be on this red line. So what I did, I just connected those four points. But again, if I find another ordered pair, the corresponding point will be on the line. I can even check. What if I pick x equals one? I'm gonna write it down here. If x equals one, I am plugging x equals one into the equation. Three times one is three, three minus one is two. So x equals one, y equals two, where is that point? x equals 1, y equals 2, it's right here. See how it's right on the line. And you can try it on your own. So basically, this line contains all inputs and corresponding outputs of the given function. In other words, this line is the graph of the given function y equals 3x minus 1. And you might recognize the type of this function. It's a linear function. And the reason it's called a linear function is because it's a graph a straight line. And the vertical line test only confirms that we're looking at the graph of a function. We can see how each vertical line will cross this graph only at one point.